Welcome to Across the Balkans. I'm Nafis Salatic. Great to have your company. The air quality in the Balkans is among the poorest in the world. It sparked growing concerns about the rise in numerous diseases, especially respiratory illnesses. Pollution levels get particularly bad during the winter when energy use skyrockets to combat cold temperatures. Sarajevo and Belgrade are often listed among the most polluted cities in Europe. Just look at this map from this winter when air pollution levels in Sarajevo reached their peak, putting it at the top of the world's worst air quality list. So what is the reason for this and why is it not getting better despite the warnings? While experts blame the burning of fuel and transportation, some even blame geography. Well, despite pledges to make the city carbon-free by 2035, high fuel prices driven by the global energy crisis has forced people to choose cheaper but more harmful options. National and international frameworks to fight this exist, but as Yasemin Cholakolu explains, a lack of action has left people fending for themselves. <laughs> Heavy smog has blanketed the Bosnian capital Sarajevo since December. The low air quality has caused it to be ranked among the top three most polluted cities in the world. Uh, Zašto je to tako? I vrlo jednostavno. Naša industrija oduvijek bila bazirana na teškoj industriji, na prljavoj industriji, na slično. Households burning fossil fuel and wood also add to the pollution. Authorities have pledged to make the city carbon free by 2035, but the cost of living forces people to use cheaper fuel. Doctors warn of serious health risks, including respiratory infections, cancer and premature deaths. Naš respiratorni sistem ima sistem koji izbacuje materije koje su štetne, ali godinama izloženost ovakvom aerozagađenju dovodi do kočenja tog aparata i to vrlo često i kod mladih ljudi, kod djece, a pogotovo kod hroničnih bolesnika. Seasonal pollution does not only affect air quality. Wet weather brings trash downstream along the Drina River to the city of Visegrad in eastern Bosnia. 10,000 cubic meters of waste is removed annually from a barrier installed by a local hydroelectric plant. Nalazimo se na Gornjem Višegradskom jezeru, je postavljena lančarnica koja zadržava plutajući otpad, evo nova godina, novi problemi, stari problemi, novi otpad dolazi. Opet je došlo između 5-6.000 kubnih metara razne vrste otpada. The worsening pollution is having an impact not just on the region's scenic beauty, but also its tourism sector. The river is highlighted for its emerald color and scenery, but during winter months, it's hard to promote tourism with all the floating waste. Nas kao građana Višegrada i kao informacije koje imamo od turista da je ovo jedna prepreka brojnim dolazcima u Višegrad. To je problem gdje je sama opština Višegrad i da ne kažem i turistička organizacija ne mogu rješavati. To je problem za jedno međudržavnom nivou, kako sam rekla već države Crne Gore i Srbije, i Bosne i Hercegovine koji na zajednički način moraju pristupiti ovom rešavanju. Dugoročan problem koji nije ni jeftin, ni lako izvodljiv, ali na tome se mora raditi. Bosnia, in its eight-year EU membership bid, committed to the green agenda for the Western Balkans in 2020, aiming to combat air, water and soil pollution. Despite aligning with EU carbon neutrality goals, progress has been limited. Urgent local and cross-border solutions are needed for a cleaner and healthier future in both the country and the wider region. Yasemin Cholakolu, Across the Balkans.
One of the main causes for poor air quality is undoubtedly the use of coal. While some European countries have taken steps to stop burning the fossil fuel, others have had to delay their transition. Well, that's mostly because of the global energy crisis fueled largely by the war in Ukraine. North Macedonia's aim to become the first coal-free country in the Western Balkans has been put on pause. Adam Mamunu explains why. Dense smog, a stifling grey hue. This is a typical winter morning in North Macedonia's capital, Skopje. It's gotten so bad that the European Environment Agency said in December, the air quality here is responsible for over 2,500 deaths yearly. I don't know, there are powers, there are ministers who think what they think. If it can be done, if it can't, we'll die like this. Well, the government said it was going to do something about it. After joining the Powering Past Coal Alliance in 2021, North Macedonia said it would be the first coal-free country in the Western Balkans by 2027. Other Balkan countries who joined the group around the same time include Albania, Croatia and Montenegro. Yet, in the face of the energy crisis brought on by the war in Ukraine, North Macedonia's goalpost has shifted to the end of the decade. And it's instead relying on generating almost half of the country's electricity by burning dirty lignite, a soft brown low-energy coal which produces pollutants when burned. To be honest, we don't have other choice. Reserves of lignite are at the end. Uh, also, we need the new power plants for base energy. Our thermal power plants and are old. In the last two years, we start for first time in our history to import lignite. But the U-turn is not the only concern environmentalists have. Some emphasise the need for greater transparency from the government and more involvement from communities. This plan we still haven't seen. The government announced that it will be presented at the COP. It's not consulted. It's supposed to be consulted afterwards, which actually throws a shadow on the actual consultations, whether they're going to be effective, post western consultations. And we're discussing about coal regions. So the communities need to be involved in the solution. North Macedonia is not alone in this energy crisis-driven shuffle. Across the region, nations are turning to coal as a desperate countermeasure to surging global energy prices. And it means they're missing their greenhouse gas emissions reduction goals set in their national energy and climate plans. Kosovo does not have a comprehensive plan to phase out lignite, and it expects its coal plants will still be in use beyond 2040. Serbia has said it is increasing coal production due to insufficient rain for hydroelectric plants, and it will import 500 tonnes of coal per day from Montenegro. Bosnia, the only Balkan country which exports electricity, says it will delay plans to shut down coal-fired power plants because of the effects of the conflict in Ukraine. Right now, a coal-free future is a dream deferred. Yet in light of the ongoing climate crisis, a harmonious balance between energy needs and environmental responsibilities must be urgently achieved. The skies might be obscured in Skopje, but the need for the country to continue down the path of cleaner energy has never been clearer. After all, it's only the future of clean air here that hangs in the balance. Adam Amunu, Across the Balkans. To further discuss the ongoing pollution problem, I'm joined by Denis Zizko. He's an energy and climate change program coordinator at the center established by the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. And from Belgrade by Alexandra Tomanic. She's the executive director of the European Fund for the Balkans. Alexandra, Denis, uh, great uh, to have you both uh, on the program. Let me start with you, Alexandra, but it, it's sort of a question for both of you. You know, as people always ask me when they see the, the titles, the the headlines, Sarajevo, the worst uh, air quality, Belgrade as well. They always ask me, is this a problem that is solvable or is it 
just something that you guys in the Western Balkans have to live with? It's solvable, definitely it's solvable. I mean, we live in the 21st century and there definitely are technologies that can be used to solve the problem. Well, but we have to distinguish of what kind of pollution we speak. We have the big polluters, uh, they're definitely in the um, state uh, responsibility and there are filters, there are, there are options. I mean, if you look at the fact that 16 thermal power plants uh, pollute m that are across the Western Balkans, so 16, one sixth, and po they pollute more than the 250 thermal power plants we have across the EU, you see that definitely it's solvable. And it has to be done urgently. The health implications on the people living uh, this toxic air every day in winter, especially, is tremendous. According to the EU Environmental Agency, 35,000 lives are lost per year as a direct consequence on air pollution. Then, not to mention heart, uh, cardiac cancers, and last but not least, the huge amount of infertility rates we see across the region are also a direct uh, effect of air pollution. So this has to be really tackled urgently and it can be tackled urgently. And the argument that then often comes like you are against progress and we have to keep uh, growing, that's also a lie. The whole Western Balkans have a GDP uh, equivalent to Slovakia. So if bigger, more industrialized countries can solve the issue without losing growth and economic prosperity, so, so can the Western Balkans. Uh, good point. And especially after the 90s, uh, a lot of uh, big polluters that we've seen uh, before um, have been shut down. Dennis, what do you see as the most urgent matter that needs to be solved when it comes to air pollution in the Western Balkans? Yeah, the thing is that the problem is simple. Uh, it is burning of fossil fuels and biomass. And to solve that problem, it's also easy. You stop burning stuff and you'll, you won't have pollution. Uh, and as it was said before, it's time for us basically to move out of the caves, uh, get rid of this fascination of burning stuff to get energy, uh, because we don't have to burn stuff to get energy in the 21st century and start working on, on uh, a fast implementation of renewable uh, sources of energy, energy efficiency measures, and uh, finally accept the fact that we are at the end of the use of fossil fuels. Because the pollution we see now on the screen is based, basically emitted by burning fossil fuels. So. Uh, we cannot deal with the temperature inversions because that's what happens during the, 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 the winter months. We have the temperature inversion, which creates a seal above a valley or, 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 or an area. And whatever is emitted underneath this uh, uh, seal stays there until the temperature, uh, temperature well, basically goes and we have the change of, of weather. So if you do not emit anything under the seal, you will not have a problem with uh, the pollution. Mm. And as we said, the emitters are anything which is burning fossil fuels. Right, Alexandra. There are solutions. Yeah. There are possibilities to deal, deal with that. European cities dealt with that problem a long time ago. The thing is that we have to stop fighting uh, and trying to prove who is the bigger polluter. Is it traffic? Is it household heating? Is it industry? And we are just losing time in this uh, fight, which is basically good for the fossil lobby, mm. in trying to prove who is a bigger polluter, instead right. of actually working on the solutions for each of these causes of pollution, which are available and existing in, in Europe and the world. Alexandra, where does the problem lie here? Who needs to educate these people? We are again back to decision makers. And you said somewhere that our tra tragedy of the Western Balkans is that our decision makers are stuck in 19th century. And I mean, they are not just, foc they are just not focused in on caves. this. In caves, they're stuck in caves, not in 19th century. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I hope Alex. Because they, they are stuck in nation building, they discuss territories, but they don't take care of people living on territories they already control and are in charge of and should care about. So that's, uh, that's the 19th century metaphor and we are 
deep in the 21st century with everything also Dennis mentioned and they're just not using it because the old narratives are so much more easier than to deal with things they, they themselves don't understand. Well, but you said like people burn whatever they have. Yes, because it's cold and they want to get uh, at least a bit of heat. And I don't think it's so so much a problem of education as it is a problem of poverty. And poverty, you deal, that that's pure politics. We live in a very poor region. Uh, even the official statistics, which are really like uh, to be taken cautiously, because according to official statistics, when you have more than 150 euros a month, roughly, uh, you're not considered poor. So don't take these uh, numbers uh, cautiously. And this, not, according even to these numbers, almost a fourth of our population across the region is in danger of poverty. So right. of course people will earn whatever they find. And that's why that that is a purely political issue that needs to be treated uh, as a policy wise. You can help people change their ovens. You can put subsidies in there. I mean, so many different things are being subsidized, which make far less sense than to subsidize and to help the poorer ones if we speak about people people are putting in their oven whatever they uh, find. On the other hand, Dennis, let me bring in you here. Uh, millions of dollars have been spent on different projects to treat this problem. Um, I can't even remember how many times I've mentioned some of them. So where does this money go? I mean, the EU is helping the region in some way when yeah. it comes to financially. But where is it? Why can't we see the results of that? Yeah, you, you use the term spent. I use the term wasted. So millions were wasted on useless uh, analysis, useless studies and, and uh, action plans. And they continue to use this money to fund consulting companies to produce these useless documents. And on the other hand, the problem why the money is not spent properly is that our politicians are basically uh, existing and, and surviving based on populist narratives. So in order to deal with this problem, you need to actually have a clear social structure which will help the social cases and assist them with the problems with energy. And for the rest, you need to have a proper, well, basically economic price of energy. In our case, in, in our countries, the authorities do not want to do this and they have this artificially created uh, cheap energy, which is heavily subsidized through the budget. So uh, in order not to have the general population unhappy and, and stop voting for them, because the energy price is an economic price, they are basically subsidizing the energy for everyone. Instead of having proper subsidies for the social cases, on for the rest of the population, which can afford to pay the commercial price of energy, it should be commercial. Okay, Dennis and, and Alexandra, unfortunately, I don't have any more time. Thank you both um, for being our guests on Across the Balkans.